Hello, everybody. We're just about ready to get started here. Um, it's almost 6.30. We've got quite a lot of people already logged on. So we want to make sure that we start right away. Um, as we know, we've got dinner time and a lot of things happening at home and work and other things. So um, we really appreciate everybody logging in tonight. And we've had a really great response across the board from canteen managers to principals to PNC members to school parents. So really thrilled with the response. Um, myself, I'm Shireen from Food Nasties and Plastic Nasties and the Northern Beaches Council and the Waste Team and the Swap for Good Team are very excited that you decided to take interest in this webinar tonight in helping schools um, rid themselves of single use plastic and waste in general and food waste. So we'll get started. Um, right now. So just a little bit of an overview on the Swap for Good um, business program. And the Swap for Good program was launched in um, June uh, with the council. The program provides information, education, resources, cross promotion ideas um, for businesses to help um, to give alternatives to single use plastic. So it's a really great initiative from the Northern Beaches Council, Alicia and Sasha from the Swap for Good team and the Waste team are fantastic in initiating programs and giving soliciting advice and suggestions to local businesses as well as school canteens. Now, a few reasons why we should Swap for Good. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are aware of a lot of these um, problems that we have with landfill, with litter pollution, polluting the ocean, microplastics that break down and become a massive problem, toxic chemicals and sustainability. Um, so this is, um, I wanna see if you remember what the war, war on waste, um, the plastic footprint, when do you remember how long it took Australian household, whole households to generate that much plastic? One minute. And in one day, the entire South Stain and Manly, North Stain, Queenscliff beaches were covered in plastic in just one day. So this is why it's imperative that wherever we can help and start, whether it's big or small, stop using single use plastics any way we can to protect the ocean and the planet. So I, I wanna be kind of honest with you guys and say that this is about single use plastic and it is about recycling, but really we want to reuse as much as possible. So when I go to canteens and schools and discuss how to implement a program of eliminating single use plastic, it really starts with trying to reuse what they have or getting in products that are reusables. Um, recycling is actually the last um, route we'd like to go to. Um, obviously recycling is fantastic and we need to continue the education of it and we need to do it. But the first R that we wanna focus on is reusing and reducing. So we wanna reduce the amount of waste we create. We wanna use reuse containers, reuse any materials when possible before we actually recycle. Now, just quickly, before I keep going, uh, we're gonna have a large Q&A, um, obviously for an hour after this. So while I'm going through, please jot down any questions you have, because I know there's gonna be a lot and I may miss it. I may not develop the answer enough. So um, please write it down and we'll get to it as soon as we finish the slides. Okay, so far, as far as canteens are concerned, first thing I like to say is your goals. What are our goals? Are they short term? Are they long term? So we got to define the goals. Do you want to be waste free, plastic free, single use plastic free? Um, what do you want to do? Obviously, every school um, is going to be different. We've got uh, different populations of schools from 200 kids to 700 kids. We have um, different volunteer initiatives and the amount of volunteers canteens might get are different. Your goals will be different. Your budgets are gonna be different. Some schools will have lots of money to spend. Most schools will not have any money to spend. Um, what is your PNC involvement? And what is the school's stance on the canteen eliminating single use plastic? So define your goals first. And then from that, we decide what support do you have? So as I mentioned, do you get volunteers? is the principal behind the school, which is the canteen, which is very important. 
Um, do you have some parents that might want to be part of the Green Team Canteen Committee? Um, we've got to look at what support do you have to make this work? Um, so again, a school in PNC or PNF support, your volunteers. And as I mentioned, do you want to be single use plastic free? Do you want to be re completely waste free and have reusables? Do you want healthier food, which kind of goes hand in hand with eliminating excessive packaging and excessive waste? Um, do you want to attempt to reduce food waste, which is hugely important in canteens. We generate lots of food waste. The children generate lots of food waste, which we know goes on to make lots of emissions. And we need to develop some kind of system to help with the food waste. Then, is it something that you would like to attain the Ocean Friendly Certification, which is a fantastic goal for any school canteen to have, which means you eliminate plastic, such as plastic water bottles, straws, cutlery, things you might have already done to this day, and you can obtain a certification that makes the canteen feel proud, the students, the school, and it's recognized by the Surf Rider Foundation. And it's kind of a nice goal to set the canteen. So some quick changes that I think are um, pretty easy. And obviously I know some of you listening have already implemented some of these, all of these, maybe only one of them. But quick changes on plastic cutlery. It just needs to go. There's obviously a solution of having reusable cutlery, whether it's um, titanium or if you already have stainless steel there, um, also bamboo, that those are obviously a better choice than having plastic. Plastic straws, we all know now that you can get paper straws, you can get bamboo straws, um, you can have pasta as straws, I mean, or most schools really don't even need straws. I find a lot of schools that I work at, um, the kids don't even take a straw. So there's other ways of just completely getting rid of the item, such as straws, or replacing it with a better sustainable option. Um, Plastic cups, this is a big one, um, but most schools don't use cups anyway, but there's opportunity to have reusable, even if they are reusable plastic cups and you have them already for school programs, using those and having them be returned to the canteen. There's rice husk cups, which are a natural product made from a natural fiber, again, having to be returned. Um, so there's water bottles that will have a secure lid. There's stainless steel options, which are fantastic. Um, so there's quite a few options for plastic cups. I know a concern we have is for the slushy machine. In the case of schools that still have slushy machines, um, my suggestion would be you would have to go to reusable cups. Um, again, a solution is the melamine cups. Um, even a cheaper option would be polypropylene, which is a high density plastic cup, which has no BPA, no BPS. Um, you know, they can be purchased at eBay, Ikea for literally about 30 cents a cup. Um, again, with that program, you will have to get um, a reusable bin. So they get put into bins or the children will have to bring them back to the canteen. But again, that is an easy switch. You just have to have the, um, have all your, I guess, implementation in order of how the cups will get back to the canteen, which we can touch on later because that is a tricky one and everybody needs to be on board with reusables. So soy sauce fishes, easy, get rid of them. Um, a way to fix that is either to have soy sauce available at the canteen counters, which a lot of schools already do, send reusable sushi um, soy sauce bottles to the classrooms in their baskets, if you have that type of school that has baskets with all the food, putting the soy sauce in that. But the majority of schools that I've spoken to, a lot of them don't even use soy sauce. It is available, um, as I mentioned, in the counter in reusable bottles, but it is not something that um, has become an issue. Kids actually just eat their sushi and the fishes aren't really needed anymore. And they are one of the number one pollutants of, in the ocean and beaches. So it is very important to eliminate the soy sauce. And all you need to do is tell, your sushi provider that you don't want them anymore. It was very simple. So that's that. The next one is the squeeze me sauces and it's the similar concept that, um, you know, a lot of schools have the barbecue or the ketchup in the small little plastic containers. Again, getting rid of those is a fantastic solution to help with the single use plastic and supplying um, reusable 
the tomato sauce or barbecue bottles at the canteen window for the kids to use if they would so choose or to send it to classrooms um, like the soy sauce. But again, I think you will find in all my studies with other schools, the kids actually don't use it very much. I do believe it's different in high school, but if you leave it available at the counter, you wash them out every few weeks, keep them clean. At the end of each term, they get cleaned out and refilled. Um, it's a very simple solution to rid yourself of that ongoing cost of constantly buying the squeeze meats as well. It's very uh, cost effective to buy the large container of tomato sauce or barbecue and to refill maybe the five that you have sitting at the counter or if you buy 20 to go to all the classrooms. But to it's a one-time investment as opposed to an ongoing cost with the squeeze meats. So again, a very easy change for that. Um, cling film, which is often used in several canteens and rampantly, and a lot of them for everything. Um, it's, I think a lot of people would know now that you can use beeswax. It is a fantastic cover to anything except for raw meat, um, as well as silicon wraps. You can find them anywhere nowadays, online or any of your good um, you know, reusable stores, Flora and Fauna, Biomi, so all of those, cling film, I, uh, all the canteens that we ch I've changed over and nobody uses cling film anymore. It's just not a necessity and it is an incredible pollutant and it doesn't break down. So the easy switch for cling film is beeswax, silicon covers that you can reuse and reuse and reuse or wraps. Um, and again, it is an investment. You buy them, they, I think, you know, the ones that I've had have been lasting over two years. Obviously you're gonna have some breakage, but silicon is a natural fiber that will break down as opposed to plastic. So it is better for the environment with no toxins. So it is a better choice. So that's what I would suggest for cleaning film. Baking paper, another common item that needs to be used when you're baking in a canteen. But again, I believe that a lot of you would know now that you can use a silicon baking mat, um, purchase those at any good um, cooking store online. Um, and they, again, are an investment. You use them over and over and over again. So that's a very easy fix for baking paper. Um, sushi without plastic. I know I had a lot of people already email in about that. Um, the sushi without plastic. And I'll go deeper into the sushi later about ordering that from your local sushi provider, uh, which is very simple. A sushi can be wrapped in beeswax wrap. It can also be put into paper bags which can be obviously recycled in your cardboard paper. So there's two options for sushi. It's a, I know people are afraid of removing the plastic and the extra work becoming time consuming, but I am gonna be honest with you for a canteen to become sustainable, sustainable more eco-friendly, reducing waste, it does come with an extra effort, but it, the rewards are far better um, when you reduce the waste that you will see how much less waste is coming over that canteen and going into your bins if you reduce the plastic. So beeswax wrap, which is a great fix for that, and small paper bags, you know, like the lolly bag size, pop it in there a little bit bigger if you've got more, um, and easily recyclable because there's no waste on them from sushi. There's, they're not full of, say, like spaghetti sauce or tomato sauce where it can't, it's hard to be recycled. So paper bags, um, you know, paper bags, there's good and bad with them. Obviously it is waste and this is what we're trying to eliminate. Even though it can be recycled, we're trying to dial back the recycling. So a reusable bag is best. So there's, I think a lot of people are familiar with Sticky Beaks. They have a reusable lunch bag um, that a lot of schools already use. Um, I developed a paper craft bag that is a biodegradable bag that can be used as well. So th there's other options than using the paper bags, which is a reusable bag, and it is a quick fix that will save you thousands of dollars and save thousands of pieces of paper that are gonna go into the recycler. So reusable bags are the first thing, if you've got the budget um, to change, you come back, you clean them, they obviously are delivered back to the canteen. And we can touch on that a little bit later. I just wanted to give um, everyone a quick snapshot of quick changes that you can do. And whether you do one or two or five, or you do all of these um, over a certain amount of time or right away, that's completely up to you and how far you wanna take um, the canteen. Uh, so one more is your plastic food containers, which is obviously the huge thing. 
Um, I'll go into a little bit more of that later. Obviously using reusable containers, it is a bit tricky. In a canteen, you wanna to try to tick all the boxes that a canteen needs, which is, can they be microwaved? Can they be put in the oven or a pie warmer? Can they be put in the freezer if you wanna stock some food in the freezer? Um, and can they be put in the dishwasher? So the answer to that is there are polypropylene containers, which is again, the plastic, say like a Sistema, um, that I wouldn't recommend because it's plastic. It can tick some of those boxes, but heating food and keeping warm food in any plastic is not a good idea. Um, there are stainless steel containers, which are fantastic, but again, they cannot go into the oven. You do not want to burn a child on accident. So there's a few things that are pros and cons with stainless steel, obviously fruit salads, yogurt and fruit, certain items um, are great, salads, sandwiches in stainless steel. Um, that's a great option. Uh, there's another product made out of rice husk that is fantastic. It does tick all the boxes as far as what a canteen needs, and it, it can be composted naturally if something was to happen to the container. And I can touch on more of that later, or if you have questions about the rice husk, um, let me know. And it is a natural product that doesn't contain any BPA, any melamine, any BPS, any microplastics. So but we can talk about that later. And then the last thing for quick change is plastic labels, the stickers that we all put in um, on the bags. Now, if you use a reusable bag, for example, like this one that has a window, you can print it onto paper because unfortunately the sticker that a lot of people use, say from Flexi Schools, um, it cannot be recycled, the top of it. So printing it, guillotining it, and putting it on paper and into the window is a fantastic way to save on the plastic label waste. Um, another one is this other bag that I mentioned, there's a window back here. So again, plastic labels, I know that's not an easy fix for some people, um, but again, down the line, maybe when you get the reusable bags, it's something that you can switch to. Okay, so a little bit more in depth about swapping this for that, and I think I've already said all this. Cling film, this just gives you a visual to look at. Aluminum foil, which is another item that canteens tend to use a lot of which is an unnecessary waste and difficult to be recycled. Um, and as some schools may not even have recycling that I'm speaking to tonight, you may not even have a commingling pickup at your school. So which means everything that I've mentioned um, is going into a landfill. You may not have a soft plastics as well. So again, all of that stuff that can be recycled in its own separate bin, if you do not have a recycling program at your school, it's actually all going to landfill. Um, so I think we touched on most of that. I think the only thing I wanted to mention was the purchasing of non-recyclable products. That's the next step for canteens that want to be waste-free as possible is eliminating um, purchasing products that come in packaging um, like confectionaries, like chips and muesli bars and other items like that. It's actually looking for items that might be recyclable if that's the one, if that's where you're at, but preferably purchasing items in bulk and then putting them into reusables like cups. Um, for example, maybe like a cup like this would have pretzels in it or bulk crisps if you had crisps at your school or fruit salad that was sold over the counter. Um, maybe even a scoop of gelato. I know um, Bill Gola uses wonderful little silicon cups for all of their gelato, which come back to them. Um, Wheeler Heights uses egg cups made out of silicon that has their gelato come back to them. Now, I wanna be very clear, I know not everybody is going to have a canteen that can do everything right away. So this is just an overview of what you can do, like I said, immediately or slowly down the line. But for a lot of the food that you purchase, you need to look at when you purchase it, can that be recycled? Or can I find that in a bulk item and put it in a reusable where we're actually not giving waste over the counter? So those are huge things. So eliminating waste is obviously where we're tracking on this. Okay, just another image to show you um, and to little tips is boomerang bags. A lot of people have a boomerang bag chapter. When you um, 
pick up your bread from the bakery, um, giving them the boomerang bags so you're eliminating bringing plastic bags back into the canteen. These are just other things above and beyond servicing the food that you can do when you order Coles and Woolies, asking them for no plastic bags, when you're ordering your fruit and veg, asking your fruit provider, do not put your one zucchini in a plastic bag. Um, those are little things that the canteen manager and supervisors can actually do to eliminate waste within the canteen. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, these are some more images about how to use reusables. So these are um, icy pole holders. So these are actually ones that Wheeler Heights uses that they've had for about four years. Um, so yes, they are plastic. This is long before we implemented that. But then again, this is a reusable plastic. These are homemade icy poles um, with obviously a wooden stick that can be recycled in the compost or the cardboard and paper recycling. That is an idea. There's also stainless steel icy pole holders, which can be bought on eBay, Amazon, anywhere, which is obviously a little bit is more eco-friendly without it being plastic. However, if you already have these things, um, this is a great way to keep, to not bring in any icy pole waste because a lot of icy poles and canteens come with packaging that's, that can't be recycled, period, or it's a soft plastic and a stick. And if you don't have a soft plastic bin, it's not going anywhere but landfill. So to purchase frozen treats for the children, the best is for them not to have any packaging. Um, again, I think I mentioned gelato going into the silicon cups as shown in the photo, maybe even in a, in a cone if, if schools wanted to do that. Obviously there's no waste in that. That's just an image of a small, I think, fruit salad that's served at a school in a reusable um, cup. So like a cupcake liner. Um, okay, so as far as sushi, I know this is a massive concern for a lot of schools because sushi um, is a, can be a really good revenue source and obviously is healthy, um, but the problem is it does have a lot of plastic and it's not just the hand rolls, it's the bento boxes, it's the uh, nigiri, which I know some schools sell. So the first thing you can do is ask your sushi provider to provide them naked, which means without the plastic. Um, and you can either, as I mentioned, when you get them, you wrap them in the beeswax wraps, which have to be, just to touch on that, when you're done with them and they do come back to the canteen, they will be need to be sanitized in lukewarm water and your sanitizer. Um, and then you hang them to dry and that's how you protect them. They will need to be re-dipped every six to eight months, depending on the frequency of use and their look and feel. Um, the other option, if the beeswax wraps is out of your depth at the moment, is to use um, the paper bags that I mentioned, which um, a lot of people use for everything, but that's a great option um, that can we know that can be recycled. Uh, so as far as the bento boxes and the small portions and the baby, yeah, the baby bentos, this is a little bit more tricky. <coughs> Excuse me. Ideally, I would love everyone to have reusables, which can be done um, and can be given to your sushi provider and they can swap it in and out. However, um, a lot of the sushi, a lot of the schools on the Northern beaches, which is obviously what we're focused on in, um, in the sense that um, the provider sees a lot of these schools and he has now, with the pressure that we've put on him to stop using the single use plastic containers, he's now creating cardboard boxes. So he'll have small bento boxes, cardboard um, boxes that sushi will go into. So if he's not your sushi provider, it is something you can ask from the sushi shop that you might get your sushi from. Um, again, putting them, getting them in a container and putting them in a reusable is the dream. However, it's obviously not gonna be right for everybody at the moment and maybe not for a while. But again, with cardboard being a known, um, material that we can recycle, I would suggest putting on the pressure for that um, to get that um, or to get a container within the canteen to put your baby bentos or not to serve them and to offer more options of the hand rolls. So again, it's how far you want to take it and where you want to stand um, on your canteen's, I guess, stance on sustainability. And um, so I guess it's an individual thing, but we'd like to see 
eliminating at least the plastic around the hand rolls and trying the paper bag and then hopefully down the line doing the beeswax wraps to eliminate the waste of the paper. I know there'll be more questions on that one, but that's um, a big one. So I just wanted to touch on that. And that's what schools that are um, becoming waste free or single use plastic free, that is what they're doing. Just some more images of how schools might eliminate the plastic cups. So obviously there's two choice, there's some water bottles there. Um, the blue one was used by Wheeler Heights, which was a $5 bottle from Target that was actually used to replace plastic, um, water in plastic, um, plastic water bottles, which was oh, quite a while ago. And at that time, it was an option for kids to borrow, not purchase the water. Um, but I would say now after a year and a half, it's no longer allowed, um, not allowed, but we don't um, borrow it anymore. It's taken off the menu online. Kids are responsible, as we all know, to bring their own water bottle. There's bubblers. Some schools even have water filling stations. So there's no reason why any school should be selling plastic water bottles. Now I know that there's money in that and that's a good revenue stream. But again, this is where you need to decide where you want to be and where you want to stand as far as being single use plastic free. That is the easiest thing to get rid of first is plastic water bottles. They just don't need them. So, um, you know, and maybe replacing it with another revenue source, whatever that might be. Um, if you feel like that's going to um, lose the canteen money, it's time to be creative and come up with some other ideas outside of plastic water bottles that the canteen can implement to offset that loss if they feel that that's going to be such um, a great loss. Um, but a lot of schools I know that, that actually still have them don't actually sell a lot of water bottles. It's an afterthought where kids get to school and realize they've forgotten their water bottle um, and they might sell a few. I'm sure there are schools that sell tons of them, but that is the perfect opportunity to stop selling them and to implement either a water bottle borrowing system, which need to be returned to the canteen, or even if you'd like to charge people for that. So if you'd like to charge a child $2 to borrow that, which is what you might sell the water bottle for, then that's totally something that can't, your canteen can discuss. Um, and if they have no problem with that and think that that's a good thing to do, I think that's a fantastic way to offset the use of the um, single use plastic bottles. And remember that once you buy the water bottles, the stainless steel preferably, um, you know, that's an investment. You will have them for a long time. You will keep them, I mean, fingers crossed, that they get returned and we'll talk about how to help initiate the return of your reusables. But um, that is one thing that really um, should be the first thing that canteens need to um, get rid of is water bottles. Now there's obviously a keep cup in the middle. Again, that's perfect for smoothies. That's perfect for juices. It depends on how you distribute them. Obviously, um, it all depends. Every school is going to be different. Some schools sell 50, some schools sell 10. So it's whether or not you have the money. I think those are from Kmart or Target, $2 a keep cup. Again, a very small investment to reduce waste, um, again, which you'll have over and over and over again. You can put labels on them that says, please return to the canteen. You can number them. You can allocate them to students so you know which student has taken, you know, which keep cup. Is it number one through 50? Um, there's other things you can do if you'd like to keep a more structure on where they're going and who has them as far as getting them back to the canteen or to a, a bin that might be on the school property. And then up at the top is a really nice um, leak proof um, dual hull, like it's hot cold that Gilgola Plateau purchased. Again, a little bit more expensive. So this kind of gives you an overview, a look at what might be $5, the one on the left, and then the Gilgola one, which was a little bit more than that, but they've got their logo on it. It's beautiful. Um, they get returned to the canteen. Um, if they get taken home by mistake, parents know it belongs to the school because it has their logo on it. Um, so they were, that was a fantastic um, option for their juices I've, and their hot chocolates, I think, at winter time, And maybe, I think they sell ice, they have iced teas. So that's those images for you. Again, um, a picture of the container, the bento box um, is the rice husk made from rice hulls that I was talking about. That's like a bento box that would have anything in it for it, hot or cold. The, um, 
the bag is a craft compostable, washable, um, eco-friendly bag that is lined. That is an option for a reusable bag. Those are something that I've created um, with, uh, it's taken me quite a long time to find something that is, that will suit canteen's needs and become be as eco-friendly and sustainable as possible. So those are just an option of that and we can talk more about that or you can email me about any of these things later and to discuss them further. But I know some people won't be looking at this stuff now and some people will. So I also want to mention a really great reusable option, which I have to say do use at Wheeler Heights occasionally is I know every canteen, every school, excuse me, has a lost and found. So we might have in that lost and found bin at the end of two months, 30, 40 um, containers, all, all different sizes and shapes. And we'll try to get them back to the kids. Um, and if they don't get back, they, some of them are given to the canteen that we feel we could use. They're sanitized, obviously, and we might use them for fruit salads, for putting um, a bit something, a cookie in or putting banana bread in. Um, without having to actually purchase that item, we've actually reused it. Yes, it's plastic, we haven't purchased it, but the, the idea behind the canteen sustainability programs that I implement are reusing either what you have or what you can find locally um, before we try to get something in that we have to recycle. So another great way to, for those containers to not go to landfill is to actually reuse them. Um, for food that you might be serving over the counter to the kids when you're implementing a reusable program. Okay, so this slide is really just to talk about, because what we've talked about now is what the canteen can do as far as changes and how we can implement some of those. We can't do any of that if we don't have um, a bin system on the school property. Now, I know a lot of schools now, especially in the Northern Beaches, have a similar bin systems to the ones that we set up at Wheeler Heights a couple years ago um, and other schools, schools like Belgola Plateau where um, we implement, implemented a waste-free program. They actually have no bins on their property, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'll talk a bit more and show you some images of that, but we need to discuss how you as a school can get a bin system going if you don't have one, what bins you're going to need and kind of show you what they look like. Now the images I'm gonna show you, uh, they don't have to look like this. You can buy your bins from Bunnings, from, you can borrow them, they could still be on your, at the school in, in a shed and you can put signage on them, they do not have to be new. They can be anything to help um, facilitate the canteens program, which has to go with the school's bin slash compost recycling program, or whatever um, you currently have or what you're going to need to implement. So for your bin systems, ideally you need a yellow bin, which a lot of us have at home. Now I know that a lot of schools do not have a commingling bin system that is picked up. It is possible, it is very inexpensive. Um, I think fortnightly you can get your commingling picked up for at a school, just like we can at home. It'll cost a school $18 to fortnight. Um, another company might be $28 a fortnight. But if you're going to be recycling, which again is our last hope in um, eliminating plastic, but I understand we have to start somewhere, you will need a yellow bin. Now that will take care of your drinks, um, your cans, your plastics if you still have them, like your Emma and Tom's, um, your nudie juices, which are Tetra Packs, which can be recycled. And bear in mind, all of them can be returned and earned as well, which can be another bin if you wanted to implement a return and earn program, which is fantastic. There are several companies like Rockdale that will come out and pick up your bins, they will give you bins and they will pick up your bins and they will deposit 100% of that money into the canteen account or the PNC account. So returning and earning is a fantastic way to offset the recycling of those um, um, cans and bottles and stuff that will go into a yellow. There's some IC poles um, that can go, uh, frozen, um, 
snacks that can go into the commingling. And um, so that's, you'll need that. So then you'll need a soft plastic bin. It, and that's mostly for the children that will be bringing their soft plastics from home. I encourage every canteen to eliminate all soft plastics. Most of the schools that I work at that we obviously transform the plastic side, we also transform the menu side to help with the plastics and help eliminate waste is by obviously not purchasing products, as I mentioned earlier, that are wasteful. So crisps, cookies, mueslis, small snacks, yogurts, yogurts with a twist. Um, but kids will bring those from home. So the school needs to help as well to have these bins available for the children to be learning how to recycle their stuff properly, whether it's from the canteen or from home. So you have a soft plastic bin. Um, composting would, is ideal. So I know some schools don't have a compost system. Even if you can just get one barrel, it's fantastic for all the waste from the canteen and from the waste from the children's lunches that they can put in there and the waste from the canteen food that's coming out uh, that they can actually put into the compost bin and learn what to put in there. And I'll show you some examples of that in a minute. Um, so composting really goes hand in hand with the canteen program, with the commingling. Um, return and earn is a bonus if we can do that, um, that's there. And obviously if you have a worm farm, that's just, oh, apologies, I can say compost is in there twice. Um, the worm farm is another great option. Um, in addition to a compost or instead of, if you do not have room for a compost. I know St. Cecilia's doesn't have room in Bagala, they don't have room for a compost. They have these amazing worm farms that are cylinders that have been put on the school grounds because they're a very small school. Um, and all the compost that can go in a worm farm goes in there from the canteen. So it's absolutely fantastic. So there's always options for everybody. Um, you've just got to figure out which one's going to best fit your school and how everything's going to get to these areas, which I'll touch on in a moment. And then the last one is the canteen reusable bin, which is if you're going to implement reusables, you will need to either designate the reusables to come back to the canteen window or to go to bins on the school grounds that will be brought back to the canteen that will obviously need to be cleaned daily. So there's two options for that, but in order to do anything reusable, even if it's only the cutlery, or if it's only going to be cups in the beginning, you have to decide how you're gonna implement that. Um, and ideally for me, bringing everything back to the canteen um, is fantastic. And bins are great, um, but I'm a belief that the less, less of the bins on the property, the better. The less option for the kids to throw things into the wrong bins. And Obviously, it is obviously um, a baby steps in the beginning. Things are going to go missing. Things are going to be found in the oval. Things are going to be found in the bush. Um, it's education, education, education. And that's where it's important for the school principal to be on board, the PNC to be on board, the teachers to be on board, and other students to help facilitate how this is all going to work. So here's some images of school bins. Now this is just one example. Um, as I mentioned, they can be anything. There's a soft plastic, your commingling, your organics, so compost, your landfill, which in this case is a see-through bin, which was done on purpose so the children and everybody could see exactly what was going in there and how much waste was being accumulated and also how, many, how much stuff was being thrown in the landfill that didn't belong in the landfill that actually could be put into the other bins provided. And then there's a paper bin to the right, a simple small square bin that a lot of classrooms use um, and that's for paper cardboard. Um, bear in mind, um, at this particular school, paper and cardboard can go into the organics. So that's kind of why the paper is so small. Um, it is kind of shared between both so as not to overload the organic spin uh, with too much paper, um, but it can be shredded and put in there and broken down. Uh, printed paper cannot. Um, and you can see that the images on the bins kind of show you exactly, and it shows the children what can and cannot go in there. So this is um, a really good way for the kids to understand, um, you know, what, what they should be putting in there and what they shouldn't be putting in there.
So obviously you can see in this photo how small the landfill is. That is after two days of school. There's hardly anything in that landfill. And that's because one, the canteen gives very little waste over the counter and they have a reusable program. Um, and also the students with their waste from home, their chips, their yogurt, all those things I mentioned that we talk about, their clean film, their Ziploc, all the stuff they still bring from home now can go into the designated recycling bins where we know it will be taken and recycled. I've just done a separate image of the reusable. So this is a sample of a canteen reusable bin. And again, like the other bins, it kind of explains what, um, what goes in there. Um, I think this has changed over time, but uh, water bottles, meaning the stainless steel water bottles, keep cups, all containers, because um, all containers that everything goes into at that school comes back. There are titanium sporks there. Um, that was the reusable cutlery. And then the bags that were reusable that are brought back and rinsed out if dirty, um, otherwise you know, shaken out and cleaned. So that is an example. But again, I wanna be very clear, it doesn't have to be a big plastic expensive bin. It can be anything that might be laying around that's correctly labeled and identified, maybe painted. So the colors there that reflects what the reusable colors should go to, the green for the compost, the red for the landfill, all of those. I know many schools that I see images from, um, you know, it's very, it's really simple. You don't have to be extravagant with the bins. So I just wanted to show you, this is an image from Belgola Plateau. So they, again, are a waste-free school. So their canteen does not sell anything over the counter that is packaged in any, any waste. Um, that um, comes in any packaging. They have no IC poles that have any packaging, even the sticks that you would have saw on the other slide, they do not even have that. So this school has no bins over the counter, or around the school, sorry. Um, and this is how they set up in the, in the beginning. So again, really simple. Um, containers were going, kids came up, put their containers in there. Material at the time was material, be beeswax now. Um, Food, they'd scrape their scraps in there that would take to compost, and then their bags, um, which would, they'd shake out into the food waste, and their bags that would be put in there. Now, so once these were full, it would, the canteen would just take them straight into their dishwasher and clean them as the lunch was going on. So, you know, halfway through, maybe at half bell, start with the cleaning, um, so they could get it done in order to leave on time. And then here's another slide of what they moved to. So this was yellow bins that they already had, I think, in a cupboard somewhere. And I wanted to show you the messy photo because that's actually how it looks. Um, and so kids, again, would come and put their bags in the slot, material in a slot, their containers in a slot, which were, for them, a reusable Systema containers with their logo on them. And then everything else in another bin, there's bags in the bottom, there's a plastic side bin that all the food was scraped into. So this is just practice and practice with the kids. Um, occasionally we'd find, you know, some cutlery around the grounds. Kids would pick that up, bring it back. Um, so yeah, so this is another way of looking at it of how it might come back to the canteen. And it's whatever would suit the school that you're in. If you wanted to go this far, again, this is, they obviously did it straight away, took a couple months. Um, you know, the principal's very hands-on there. Um, so the canteen managers were very eager and their PNC members were very supportive. So again, you need all these things to kind of facilitate it. If I go back to actually this school, in order to make their program work, they have um, a sustainability leadership program. So what that means is they have 50 to 60 children that were elected or put their hands up to be in a, a leadership program similar, sim, um, similar to SRC. And either on a roster and it might be these four kids this day, those four kids for recess and for lunch, and they're on a roster for the term and their job is to help man the bins, to return the bins to the compost, to put the recycling into a larger recycling bin to be picked up, um, to take the soft plastics and take them to the teacher that's, that spearheads the sustainability program. Um, they have parent volunteers that take the, the soft plastics Monday through Thursday. The canteen takes the soft plastics on Friday 
to your red cycle centers, so like Coles and Woolies, if that's something you wanted to implement. The reusables would come back to the canteen and the kids, the children in the program help unload the bin. So take the rubbish out, take the paper label out, take the spork out, um, shake them out. Um, if they're dirty, obviously the canteen team will sort that out, but help empty the bins. Um, that is part of their program. That is how this reusable program works for them. Um, the landfill is taken by the maintenance, um, the groundskeeper, he does that. And the paper is recycled in this school by year five. So there's, lit there's a program that works for this school, which can be implemented in any school, but you obviously need to have help from the school to allow for whether it's um, the classroom roster, they might assist with sustainability in the canteen, or it might be a sustainability leadership program where it's actual children that are part of this program. So I know other schools will do year three, we'll do term two, all year four, we'll do term five, and they do exactly the same thing. They manage the bins um, during recess and lunch and implement it that way and assist the canteen. And assist the school, really, because this is a school's program um, as well as the canteen's program. You cannot do, the canteen cannot function without the school assisting them with the program. So I'll just go on to that. So as far as canteen operation, um, which I'm very familiar with. So time management is key. So implementing this program, you need to know, obviously, how are you gonna manage it? Are you gonna fit it in those six hours or five and a half or whatever you're allocated as a manager at your school? How it's gonna work? And that might determine your steps. So that might determine your baby steps, steps with your reusable program, with switching to more homemade food to eliminate bringing in waste, um, with cleaning of the dishes, which is obviously going to take some more time. Um, so time management is key. You'll need the principal and your teacher's support of the canteen and the PNC of this process. 100% um, hands down, you cannot do it without the school on board. And student sustainability program, I just touched on that. If you can initiate that, it is a fantastic support system for the canteen and for the compost, which obviously doesn't belong to the canteen, for the soft plastics and the commingling, which belongs to everybody. So the leadership program or the classroom sustainability program is for the entire school. So it's not just a canteen program, as I mentioned. So you need all these other programs to help facilitate everything. Um, so how is your canteen volunteer program? You know, most schools that I work at that I, over the last seven years, it's not that good. So how are you going to get more volunteers? Will you get more just beca because you're now more eco-friendly and sustainable? Some parents really appreciate that and you'll find you will get more volunteers because of, because of that. Or will you not? Do you need to get a new online sign-up roster system? Do you need more classrooms involved where you actually allocate classrooms to be part of term one in this week and term two that week um, and designate classrooms. You will need help from your canteen subcommittee to help make sure you have help um, in the canteen to, especially when the program is just beginning, especially when you're deciding what you wanna do. But that's really when the reusable program kicks off. As far as eliminating straws and cutlery and single and plastic bottles that's that's a no-brainer that's not going to take you any more time eliminating soy sauce fishes eliminating squeeze me that's not going to take you more time so it's the big stuff that's going to take you more time and it's when you're eliminating the food and packaging that's when you're going to need help but in the beginning the implementation of the single-use plastic is not it's not going to your volunteers are not going to be needed for that um, and then the parent green team, a lot of schools have green teams and it's, you know, obviously encouraging them to help you more um, when you need to um, help cleaning bags, help uh, doing, you know, just more time in the canteen. Um, so another question I get uh, that where I was asked is how do we purchase the products? And um, I guess I first thing I ask you is do you need that item? You know, crisps are an, a, a big question. Do you really need to sell crisps at school? Yes, I realize they're a money maker. Um, I guess you need to decide where you're going to draw the line about what you're gonna sell, and A, is it nutritious? And does it come in packaging? Is, can I buy that in bulk? Can we put crisps in here if it's a necessity? 
Um, or can I swap it out for something that might be a little bit healthier? Or can I take it away all together and yeah, maybe make something from scratch that is obviously going to be healthier because most things are if you, you're looking at your nutrition and it's going to be more cost effective because it's homemade. Any, anytime you make something from scratch is going to be more cost effective than buying anything in bulk. Okay. So um, then again, obviously I've mentioned it, limit your products and packaging. Just stop buying them. Like everyone asks me, how do you do it? You just stop buying them. Do you need nine frozen treats at a school canteen? Do you? I mean, you know, again, this goes back to nutrition and what's really needed and maybe just dialing it back a bit and seeing what exactly you need. Instead of buying maybe the icy pole with the wrapper and the stick, making the homemade icy poles, you know, with the cardboard stick in a reusable container, you're going to make a lot more money and it's more cost, it's more cost effective and it's better for the environment. Um, and you can also obviously make it more nutritious. You can add fruit, you can take away a lot of the juice and add water. There's all those tricks you can do that are actually going to tick a lot of boxes. Um, a lot of questions I get about is how are we going to wash all this reusable stuff if we go down that route? Um, so I think there was a little bit of misunderstanding um, and communication um, from maybe the Food Standards Board Council about commercial dishwashers. So it was my understanding for a while that it was a necessity to have reusable items in the canteen. You had to have a commercial dishwasher. So exciting news is you don't. So yet the bonuses with the commercial dishwasher is you know they're being sanitized at that high degree of heat with the sanitizer in there. It is also a key with time management. If you've got 700 kids at a school and you're doing reusables and you're gonna wash them in 90 seconds to a minute or two minutes, that is key to a reusable program so a canteen manager isn't there till five o'clock at night washing dishes. Okay, so that is the massive bonus with a commercial dishwasher. However, if that is not in your budget, because they are anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000, which is a massive expense, you can have a double bowl sink. So a lot of canteens have two sinks. So you'll have one for washing, one for sanitizing. It can be used for reusables, which is fantastic news. I just want to make it very clear, this is Northern Beaches Council. Um, but that is a health and food and safety standard for all of Australia that you can have a double bowl sink, but you must be able to show council when they come in that you know how to use it properly. So that's how much water, the heat, the sanitizer, the type of sanitizer, the dishwashing liquid, and how you wash your containers. So again, having a commercial dish dishwasher takes all that stress out of it, but if you can't afford it, um, a double bowl sink is, is doable and fine, but you also, you also must have a hand sink. So you cannot be washing your hands in the same sink that you're sanitizing in. So I know a lot of canteens do have a smaller hand sink, but if you don't, that's what you're gonna need to have. Um, I just put under there for the commercial dishwasher, which you know, as far as me being a canteen manager, it's fantastic to have. When you're washing, did you need that time? You need to do it quickly. You don't want to be there all day. So look for a used one. Look at Gray's online. Look for secondhand, maybe a parent, a builder at school. I know another school just got one off a parent that's a builder, and that's why I wrote that, that found one on the property. Um, you know, ask around. Look for school funding. Most canteens are PNC funded. That does sound like a good school cost to me. So maybe negotiate with the school principal that if that's going to be implemented into the program in order for it to work, you're going to need some help to purchase a commercial dishwasher. Now, if you can't at this time, you know, start with a double bowl sink and then do some funding and see how you go. Um, so, and also don't forget to recycle within the canteen. You need to have compost in the canteen. You need to be doing your yellow commingling within the canteen because clearly there's not, there's products that you bring in that your cheeses, um, you know, your milks, your juices, other things that you might have in bulk that you're going to need to recycle yourself. So you're going to have to make sure that in the canteen you do your own recycling. So you've got your chicken food if you have chickens, you've got your compost if you have compost, your yellow bin, and that you're recycling all your paper and cardboard. So just make sure you've got that set up within the canteen as well as uh, around the school. 
So I know this is a lot of information, so um, we're getting near the end. So I just wanted to give you some ideas because I know the biggest question is, how can, how can we afford this? Now, again, it comes back to how much do you want to do, baby steps, set yourself your goals, um, you know, what's going to cost you, where your budget is. Um, remember, this is an investment. This will eliminate reoccurring costs. The takeaway containers you order every month, the cutlery you order every, every month or every two weeks or however you do your purchasing, with the reusable program, it is an investment. All the paper bags that you're ordering all the time, you know, that you're sending out with the kids um, and that are maybe getting recycled, maybe not, having reusable bags, all the reusables are an investment. So you've got to remember that when you're trying to find, get funding from the PNC or get funding from the school. Um, this is an investment um, in, the, in the school, in the planet, you know, so it's not a reoccurring cost that you're currently getting. Um, so help from your school, obviously just mentioned that, help from your PNF or your PNC. Fundraising opportunities, a lot of canteens don't do fundraising. Um, I work in a lot of them that do, you know, some sell the entertainment book to help offset their sustainability program. Some do tea towels, some do cookbooks. Um, the Gola Plateau did a fantastic cookbook a while ago. You know, maybe it's recipes that you get from school parents, but all the money you put it together with your subcommittee and all that money comes back to help purchase that commercial dishwasher. Maybe you have a dad's day. Uh, Wheeler Heights is a fantastic dad's day where on one day, you know, they'll make enough money to purchase, um, you know, reusable bags that they purchased a year ago. It kind of offset that cost. Uh, grandparents Day, let's get the grandparents involved. There's lots of grandparents, you know, I know we're always looking for help in the canteen. This is the perfect way. Get them in there to bake, to try to start making some homemade items that you're now going to implement because you're not going to buy the muesli bars that come in packaging, which are full of, you know, sugar and artificial colors and flavors or, you know, lollies or whatever you might have. Um, but have them come in and support the school and get involved. Um, there's several other out of the box ideas that you can think of, but this is what canteens I think are becoming and PNCs are realizing it. Your subcommittees are going to be, you're going to need them more than ever to help with the fundraising. There's also, um, I know some schools have been looking at their before and after school program. So some schools own them, their own ish, some do not, but asking them for a donation. I know one school just got a nice um, donation. They wanted to help with the sustainability program. A lot of their after school care programs have a lot of money and they want to donate it to something that's important to them. And why not the program that's within the school that they're in? So that's just an idea. These are just ideas. They might fit your school and they may not. Um, grants, there's loads of grants out there. You just have to look. There's a nude food grant that's going all the time. There's a brand new New South Wales government grant, which is a $15,000 sustainability grant. Um, that's just been launched. There's all little tiny ones. There's a fantastic Facebook page called Sustainability New Schools New South Wales. That she always has grants available, information available. It might be 2,000, it might be 15,000. You know, get, if you need help with that, maybe put it out there in the school newsletter, get a parent that's familiar with grants. There's information on the Northern Beaches Council website. There's classes you can take on how to write grants. Um, so there's other things. I know it seems like a lot, um, but these are ways that you can help offset the costs that you might incur to implement this program. So we went through this already. So that's just the basics of, you know, the little things that you might need to get started. So I won't really go on with that. Um, I just wanted to touch on your current menu because we did touch on that. Um, it it kind of goes hand in hand with a sustainability program is healthy food because eliminating waste um, you eliminate buying packaged and processed food. So I just wanted to remind everyone, your, the assessment's coming soon in December. Consider what you're buying, consider what they're coming in, consider what the ingredients is, and um, don't forget that's due in December. And try not to, when you look, if you can't could be completely waste-free, have a look at what you're purchasing and please make sure it's recyclable. A lot of products, you look at it and you think it might be, it's not. Call the supplier and if they do not know, call uh, the manufacturer of the product. Very easy to do to find out if you're, what you're selling is recyclable. I was just a sample menu if anyone wants to see it. I just wanted to show you some food that is actually made and sold in a completely reusable canteen, that it is easy to do, that things are recyclable that are on this menu um, or they're returned and earned. 
Um, all the food that's served in the daily specials are in reusable containers. All the recess and over-the-counter are all homemade and served in either cups or silicon or paper bags or re everything's reusable. Um, all the frozen items are made on the school property or in reusables. So that's just a snapshot. If anyone wants to see that at a greater length, I'm happy to send it to you privately. So this is just a snapshot about what food nasties and plastic nasties, we, what I do uh, when I come into a school, into a canteen and assist in how to make the program, implement the program from either a couple items to a full scale waste free overhaul. So it's as big or it's as little as you want, but I'll leave that there for you to have a look at, but I know we're nearly at 7.30 and I'm pretty sure there's lots of questions. So I might just go over to the Q&A now and get started. All right, so water bottles are. Okay, there's a question from Min, and she's asking about water bottles um, are refillable, interpreted. I'm not quite sure 100% what she means, but uh, when I'm talking about the stainless steel water bottles, we want to eliminate single use plastic, replace them with that. If your school does not feel comfortable, with replacing, uh, with losing the cost of the plastic bottles, then you can charge a fee for them online, um, same, same fee, and they can refill them at the bubbler. Um, down the line, which I did mention, um, now they're just borrowed at some schools, but actually they're not even borrowed anymore because kids bring their own. So um, yeah, so the water bottles, we wanna get rid of single use plastic and we want to initiate with stainless steel water bottles if you feel that your canteen needs to keep offering water um, as a revenue source or just to your kids. But I think the children nowadays should know to bring their own water bottle. So let's go on. Um, what does the school, okay. So I've got a question from Kathy. What does that school use to collect the soft plastics in? Okay, so that, School uses a, I'm not sure of the brand to be honest, I can probably find out for you. Uh, it, it is a compostable bag and they buy that online. If I can email you later um, and then, so they put that in that. And then when they take it to um, Woolies and Coles, they empty it into that. Um, a lot of times they keep the bag. A lot of times, sometimes, depends on the parent, the volunteer that's doing it, they'll put the compostable bag in there. Now again, let's be clear about compostable stuff. It's only going to be composted if you've got a, the correct composter. And as well as biodegradable, we got to be careful when we're biodegrading microplastics, like a plastic, it's still going to break down into um, plastic tiny bits. So neither are the answer. I would suggest with soft plastics is when you take it to Coles or Woolies, it's just literally, uh, which is what we do on Friday at the canteen, is emptying the plastic bag, the contents, into the recycled bin, which is at grocery stores. So we're actually taking it out and putting it in. So um, I know you can, I will have a look, Kathy, if there's a better answer, but my answer would be to go ahead and just dump the soft plastics into your recycle center bins. There's already a plastic liner in there. So it's not a necessity to actually have the plastic in there, if that makes sense. And then just keep reusing the plastic bag. So hope that answered your question. Let's go down a few more. Um, just a quick question, this is from Alexandra. How would you clean reusable bags? Don't suppose they could go into a commercial? Okay, so it's a good, great question. It depends on the bag that you have. So Sticky Beats, which is a popular one, um, it can go into a dishwasher. It does wear and tear them a lot quicker than they would like, because I know from experience, so a lot of times um, at Wheeler Heights, I can only speak, and for Bilgola, they can be rinsed out, obviously with soapy water. And we, have it, we put up a air dry system, which was just made with old rods that they had in the, um, the maintenance shed, um, where we put them over to air dry. Um, we line dry them with a clothesline, clothespins, stainless steel, and they air dry that way. Um, there is, a few that I have that are made with um, 
that have a lining and Sticky Beaks has a lining, it's mostly just wiped out. So what happens is the logo comes off on their bag and it kind of goes everywhere and it actually makes their bags look dirty, but they're not dirty. So I would unfortunately, would say hand washing is the way to go. Now I have put them in the washing machine on a gentle cycle. And again, the um, logo does tend to go, but it does clean them very well and it doesn't distort the bags. So I don't know about a uh, commercial dishwasher would probably do the same, but again, it's just the lifespan of the bag that you're taking, but it can be done, but you will, you will see them deteriorate faster than they probably should. So I hope that answered your question. I'm, I'll, we'll try to find the perfect bag down the line, which can go into a commercial dishwasher or washing machine that comes out perfect, I'm sure. Okay, Jan, how do you secure a paper label from Flexi Schools to a paper bag? Okay, <clears throat> so I did have a phone call um, with Kimberkey and again, Northern Beaches Council tip and some other cardboard recycling manufacturers, they did not seem to have a problem with the food label being on the paper bag. So again, you do get different um, conversations from people, but they use it as an example. If you're using a cardboard box and you're mailing that overseas and that has a label on it, or you're mailing it anywhere, and that has a label on it, that can be recycled. So the plastic, the plastic tag or Flexi Schools label onto the paper bag um, can be recycled from what I've been told. Again, it depends on who's taking your cardboard and recycling because everyone's got different plants that it goes to and I don't know what school you're from. So you'd have to find out 100% if it can't. Now, if it can't, the best thing to do is to go reusable because then you can print the Flexi School labels onto an A4 sheet. You can guillotine them cut them and they go right into the slot into the reusable bags that I've talked about. So again, and it eliminates the paper bag. So it, for me, again, it's kind of a no brainer. If you can get the reusable bags, it eliminates two things, the waste of the bag and the waste of the sticker. So in the back of the sticker can't be recycled. So there's a lot of reasons to stop using the sticker. I know it's convenient, but it's really not that much different when you start guillotining and shoving it in. Um, I'll give back for PWSA, for the kids that leave the property, they do not leave with a re reusable bag. They leave at some schools with a paper bag, obviously, so they can, um, because the reusables won't come back. Um, a sticky tape is used, and again, it's a very small amount with the paper label to secure it, and that shouldn't affect the recycling of the bag. So I hope that answered your question, Jan. Okay, let's see. This is from Anonymous. Okay, we already have implanted keep cups if people don't actually use them. Okay, so this is a good one. Coffee cups, which we all know is a terrible pollutant and cannot be recycled. And the only thing I can say is to stop using coffee cups. I'm not sure if you're ser serving coffee in them because I think only high some high schools do that. Um, is you're just going to have to get a reusable cup <laughs> because coffee cups is just straight to landfill and it's just as bad as single-use plastic. So again, it's using um, a cup. Here's a rice husk one that has the silicon, which is um, biodegradable, which is eco-friendly. Um, I can tell you how to get this if you wanna to speak to me. If you don't need to have a lid on it and you wanna put stuff in it, you know that can be a melamine cup that we see at every cafe. Now, melamine's not my favorite, but it's fantastic, and it can be reused and reused and reused and reused, and you can reuse them. You put popcorn in them, you can put pretzels, you can put fruit salads, you can put juice. It all depends on what exactly you wanna put in them. So if you wanna email me later um, at my email um, and tell me exactly what you wanna use it for, I might be able to give you a more specific solution, but a reusable cup is going to be your option. And again, even if that is a reusable cup that you get, um, you know, the colored ones from Ikea. I don't encourage buying polypropylene or plastic, but I understand you've got to start somewhere and you can use them for a hundred different reasons. Okay. Hope that helps. Um, let's see. Um, Stephanie, do you have any advice on how to get the whole community, <laughs> oh, um, how to get the whole school community on board? No, and I say that because it isn't as easy as you think, which is I'm sure why you're asking. 
Um, the majority think it's great, love what you're doing, um, but it's never, you're never gonna get the entire school community on board about anything that happens in a school, whether that's what events you're doing for fundraising, uh, what programs, your sports programs you're running, how many air conditioners do you need, and definitely about you know, a sustainability program at, about, at, a, at a school canteen and the school. But I definitely think it's happening right now. They can't avoid it. It is the state of the planet. Um, you know, they, all you can do is keep showing them, I guess, progress. And what that might be is um, landfill, decreasing the landfill from X amount to X amount, showing them the rewards of what the canteen's doing, the children are doing, the school's doing, you know, the goals that you're kicking. Um, because I'll tell you what, the students really embrace this program. They love to recycle. They will go home and tell their parents how to recycle. They are proud of what their school's doing. Um, you know, with the teachers on board and implementing maybe education behind the program and making it fun for the kids. Um, and yeah, I guess it's really just showing, explaining why you're doing it. Now, why are we doing this? Because right now our canteen is selling 500 water bottles a month. What does that equate to? Showing them figures and sizes and the waste, doing waste audits, doing um, um, trash audits at your school and showing that visually to the school community in the newsletter on your websites so they can see how much waste at your beautiful school you're generating and then how many, how you, you know, decrease those numbers and how proud the kids are. And um, I think with those bit by bit, you'll get more and more school community behind you. But it is, it is hard and it's going to be hard in the beginning, but you've got to latch on to the people that support you and use that and help facilitate them with positive reinforcement and ideas. So I hope that helps Steph. Um, apparently the new healthy canteen guidelines specify low fat, not regular milk. Okay, so Annalise, I am not a proponent that much of the New South Wales guidelines. So I guess I'm not going to tell you what you should and shouldn't do cut in the canteen, but there's ways around everything. And I think if common sense is telling you that that's probably not the most nutritious um, item, uh, I think that uh, it becomes an occasional food and there's ways to not use that. I, I've been in about eight schools in the last couple of weeks and none of them sell low fat milk and none of them use margarine. So I'll just leave that with you to kind of, um, yeah, you facilitate what you think is nutritious. And, you know, if, if that means that you need to say you have those things um, or not have those things and not have anything to replace them, you know, that's, that's your call. Can cutlery be washed in the dishwasher and still in meat? Yes, most definitely in a commercial dishwasher and in your double bow sink. Everything that's reusable can be washed. I know people heard that rumor for a while about the titanium and that it couldn't be washed in a domestic dishwasher. I have to be very clear. Uh, domestic dishwashers are not allowed in, uh, to wash utensils or containers in a school canteen. It needs to be done in the double bowl sink the correct way, which you can get all that information on the Food and Healthy Standard website on how to sanitize properly. And I would suggest to have it on your wall so everyone knows how to do it, even the volunteers when they come in. Um, and everyone knows how much to put in each thing and how you should be doing it properly. Um, but, and, but absolutely in a commercial dishwasher, they're completely fine to wash. Kate, our Biopack, a good company. Biopack is a fantastic company. We're not going to knock anyone that's trying to eliminate plastic in its core, a single use. Um, but I have to be very clear, which I did mention early, or Biopack um, does make a bioplastic. And bioplastics are not the best choice for recycling and for breaking down and ending up in the ocean and the beaches. So it is definitely not a choice I would suggest. It is also very expensive. Um, they also have requirements for their compostability. So a lot of their items they sell cannot be composted 
in a, a school composter or domestic. It needs a commercial composter. And you're going to have to get that to the correct facility to break it down. So Biopack does offer straws and obviously things without the microplastics. Please make sure if you can actually correctly compost it if you've got something or if it's going to biodegrade the way they say it will, 90 days in a, in a domestic composter um, and a school compost garden, I would suggest you try it. But my advice would be to avoid the microplastics at all costs, the cornstarches, all those that are going to break down, the cutlery that are going to break down into little bits. Um, so unfortunately, I would reusable is the best way to go or cardboard and paper only be because we know it can be recycled um, in its truest form. So I hope that helped, Kate. Susie, um, what is the best way to clean a silicon baking mats? I used them and found that I converted it back to because they, yeah, unfortunately, Susie, I do find they do become greasy. Um, baking soda, I found was really good in cleaning, like I think an old cleaning tip from way back. Um, that did help. Um, sanitizing them properly in the correct sanitizer and the baking soda. But I think that's just a natural compound of the silicon. It does have that film, um, but it's not dirty if you're cleaning it properly. Um, so I do the baking soda, hot water, scrub them, and we hang dry them instead of stacking them on top of each other, where I find it does tend to get a little bit greasy as well. Um, but they're a fantastic alternative to baking paper. It cannot be... Um, Recycled baking paper isn't good. There is a compostable biodegradable uh, paper from, I believe it's Alpha Foods, that is a lot better than actual baking paper. So you might want to look into that. And if you need more information on that, just give me a call. But I would suggest trying the silicon and maybe trying different mats. I know there's um, some called Agrina that are a little bit fiddly, but they don't get as greasy. Um, they do wind up like in a little ball, but you, they don't get as greasy as some of the thick, thick silicon mats that people can buy. So it might just be trying to find the right product. But try one more time because, yeah, baking paper um, is a pretty wasteful item. But thank you so much for asking, Susie. All right, Sophie, can you tell me more about the rice husk? Also, what existing products are made? Okay, so just briefly, because I think this is a conversation I can have if you'd like to email me. I have been developing these for about a year, trying to come up with a product that can tick boxes for canteen managers. So the rice husk looks like, it actually looks like plastic. It's not, it's made from the hull of rice. And if you wanna Google rice husk and what it's made from, um, it's, it, you, uh, do it so you can understand a little bit more about it. Um, this is an example of the bento box. Um, so you can put hot cold in there. It goes to 120 degrees. It can be put in the freezer. It can be put in the dishwasher. It can be put in the pie warmer. It can be put in your oven if you keep it at you know about 80 degrees. So, you know what what I wanted to do was have something that went that ticked all of our boxes as canteen managers, where you can have things hot cold, clean them quickly. They go in the commercial dishwasher. Um, and this is the product that I found that is the best. If it breaks, cracks for some reason, you can bury it. It will biodegrade naturally um, in six to nine months. Um, it doesn't leak any toxins, um, but this is a private product that I have had made and it does have everything with it, like the cutlery, the cups, small boxes, small round containers. So for maybe yogurts, fruit salads, whatever else you might sell. Um, it all just depends. Every canteen is going to be different and have different needs. Um, so I have found this to be the best product, um, being eco-friendly and ticking all the boxes that we need. So, um, yeah, so maybe just email me um, and I can give you more information about that and how schools and the packs, there's kits for schools. Um, obviously, you don't have to buy everything. Or maybe you want to start with just the cutlery. There's a couple different options and, you know, that's what they look like. So happy to share any of that information and more information about the Rice House privately, um, just because there's so many questions right now. Hope that's okay. Thank you, Sophie. Um, we, let's see, Jay Fry. I think we talk about recycling as much as we can, but most of the items like soft plastics and paper get covered in food. 
I thought items had to be cleaned to be recycled. Yeah, well, they do, but inside a canteen, if you're doing your soft, if you're doing your commingling, obviously anything that we have, jars of mayonnaise, um, cans of, say, butter chicken sauce, passata, all of those can be cleaned out on our end and recycled properly. Um, we can only do so much for the kids. Soft plastics are generally not too messy. I deal with them all the time. It's usually um, mueslis and crisps and everything, but I think we need to be clear that you have to be recycling. So even though it's not our first choice, we can't teach kids not to recycle. So if something's got something on it and the school grounds say a yogurt, um, it has to be recycled anyway. So I guess we'll leave that with this recycling plants. It may not get recycled. It's when you dump lots of food in the commingling, say food gets dumped, it goes across everything and it gets contaminated, you have an issue. Um, but it's a really tricky one because you can't not recycle. We have to recycle and you have to do the best you can. And we have to teach the kids to do the best they can. Um, I guess this is kind of what touches on why I love no bins in school, because if kids are bringing yogurt tubs and uh, squeeze me yogurts, whatever, anything else that might be messy, they should be taking that home to their house and being responsible for their own waste as opposed to dumping it in the school recycling and possibly contaminating what we're trying to do, which is recycle correctly. So it's a tough one, but I think at the end of the day, um, yes, if it's covered with food, it's not gonna get recycled, it's gonna contaminate it, but you've gotta try and you've gotta teach them um, the soft plastics, you've got to teach them to recycle it anyway and let the red cycle centers and the recycling plants handle that situation. As far as paper, most paper can be recycled even if it's soiled a little. Now, if it's saturated with food, no, it's not going to be recycled. And again, these are both great, great questions because it's why we should be reusing everything. Because once we soil them, it's very unlikely they will not be recycled. So if we are reusing everything and selling items in reusable containers that can be easily cleaned, and if we're not offering packaged food items that can be messy, then there's no problem. So again, it goes back to that's really where we wanna focus is on reusing and eliminating as much use of paper as possible and eliminating as much use uh, soft plastics coming from the canteen. I know you can't change what's coming from home and that's why I'd like kids to take their soft plastics home with them in their lunchbox and not contaminate the school stuff with it or not to have them at all. Because if the canteen's not selling any soft plastics, I'm not sure why the canteen or the school should be responsible for taking all of the children's rubbish to the Red Cycle Center. So again, this is every school's different, every opinion's different, but I feel that if they're gonna bring rubbish to school, they should take rubbish home and recycle it into their own recycling systems. So I hope that answered your question. Reusing is just always better. Um, okay, do you know of schools that have their own washing stations where students can bring their own waste-free options? Um, I did a seminar, I do believe there is a small Catholic school and I can't, to be honest, remember the name, and they bring their own containers. Um, but that's the only one I've ever heard of. So again, I think that depends. I don't believe a big school could do that. Maybe a school of 250. I think this school's only opened two days a week, might have 200, maybe only 40 kids order from the canteen. It is doable where they have their container there. Um, again, that's just up to the canteen. I guess if they want to facilitate that, if they can, obviously everything has to come back and be sanitized properly. Um, but it's definitely a reusing option that is fantastic. You just have to, it just, if it suits your school, um, I guess if they're bringing you a bunch of plastic containers, are you putting hot food in it? Is it leaching toxins? Can it go into the pie warmer? Probably not. Um, it depends on, yeah, what type of container it is and how you're going to keep that food warm. You know, if I, I like a spaghetti, I don't really know how that's going to work. Even if it's a stainless steel, um, I guess you as a canteen manager are going to have to go straight from oven to container and hope that it's not going to affect the children as far as temperature and stuff. So it is a bit of a tricky one. I would think that it won't work at most schools. 
Hope that helped. Thanks. Um, is it more difficult to implement these changes if your canteen thing? Hmm. Okay, so this is anonymous. They want to know about a third party tender. I would say most definitely it's going to be tricky because if you've got a canteen um, that is a tender, so it's a lease, um, and they're already there, it's going to be very tricky to implement it halfway through their lease. So um, I guess you, in this case, you may have to wait till the tender runs out. And I'm in the process of working with a high school that is doing the same thing. And what is happening is in their tender agreement, um, they have put in it what they, the leasee will have to do to meet these sustainability requirements. So whether that is to reuse reusables, whether that is to use only um, recyclable materials or cardboard bamboo, or to implement a company like Pack 360, which is a company that you buy all the containers from them. They supply your bins. They pick up all the compostable material. They take it all to their plant. They compost it. It all gets composted ethically, responsibly, um, without any microplastics. And I only mention them because it's one that I'm familiar with um, and an, another company called Waste Ninja. And they're both, both companies are part of the Swap for Good program. Um, that the Waste Ninja will pick up waste for them as well, like your compost and stuff. So I, it is possible, but it will incur a cost to them, or it's how you offset the cost. Is the school going to pay for them to use a sustainable, a better company in these containers, or is the cost go to them? It's going to be very tricky in the, in the interim while they're there, but I think if you implement it when the tender's up, um, you just hopefully have to find the right person that will take the tender. So I hope that, I hope that helps. Vonda, what about juice flavored milk? How can team replace them? Okay, so yeah, so again, it depends. I think it's Vonda. Um, what you want to do about your juice and your milk. So if you don't want to be a waste-free canteen, you just want to get rid of plastic. You say you have juice like nudie juice. Um, unfortunately, they have a straw, so a lot of canteens have stopped using them. We've been putting pressure and pressure on them to remove the straw altogether and let canteens just give the students a paper straw or to not use a straw. Um, I'm having the same conversation with Emma and Tom's as well, which is a, the best flavored milk, I think, on the market because it's naturally flavored. A lot of schools that I work at, I don't have flavored milk that's artificially flavored. So Emma and Tom's are very eager to probably eliminate the straw and leave it up to the canteen to have a straw available, being a paper straw or a reusable straw for the children to, to take or to not take. I think you'll find some kids just drink it right out of it, but otherwise you can put the paper straw in the bag with the drink. Um, or if you don't want to have any waste, um, it's using the leak-proof uh, drinks. So the stainless steel drink cups or leak, any type of, I'd say leak proof because obviously you're going to have to fill them and put them in a basket or on a counter and you don't, tipping over, you've got to be very careful. So the leak proof is important. So you're either going to use a leak proof reusable cup, which is cup, which is ideal, or you're going to use recyclable containers. Uh, Nudie, which I'm not, a, I love their juice, but I'm not a proponent of their straw. So I'm hoping they're going to work that out soon but they are return and earn and they are recyclable. So they do have a positive and same with Emma and Tom's, but it's very hard to find juice, um, any type of popper, any type of juice that doesn't come with a plastic straw. So that is why schools tend to go with a no leak cup because you just can't find it without the straw at the moment. So I encourage anyone that's interested, email Nudie, email Emma and Tom's, ask them to develop it. They both know that canteen managers are canceling them left, right, and center that are trying to eliminate that plastic straw. Because if you don't have plastic straws in a canteen, but then you've got a nudie juice, you're kind of sending the wrong message. You're contradicting yourself with the kids and they're pretty well aware of it. And they will come up and say, how come I got a straw when you're telling us not to use a straw? So they really got to try to figure out how you're going to eliminate that juice. And then I guess the last thing is, is that, um, does your school really need the juice? I know they're money makers for the canteen. However, some schools that we've implemented this programs that they don't even sell juice anymore. 
they, their decision is, do kids really need juice at school? They might sell the Parmalat milk with a paper straw and let them have water. So again, this is what happens when you're thinking about these ideas. You have to ask yourself, is it nutritionally viable? Do they really need it? And if your answer is yes, how can you replace it with the most um, you know, sustainable option possible? So I hope that, I hope that helps. All right, Sophie, what are the benefits of using silicon in reusable containers? Um, I'm not sure. Silicon in reusable containers. I'm not quite sure what that means exactly, Sophie, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's benefits. It's just better than using plastics because there are no toxins in it and it breaks down naturally and doesn't emit toxins when you're done with the silicon. It is a better choice than plastic. So I wouldn't necessarily, uh, there's no benefits except for you're not using plastic, which is toxic and doesn't break down. Um, so that's why a lot of the options, oh, I think you mean for like the cupcake liners. I think that's why a lot of schools have opted for that. Um, one, it can be very inexpensive. Um, some of them are dual purpose. So when you schools use those cupcake liners, they put ice cream in it, they put frozen juice in it, they put fruit cups in it, popcorn in them. They're cheap and they're more, they're just more eco-friendly. So, and obviously they come back. So that is, I guess, the benefit to it instead of using plastic. Uh, Jan, hi Jan, let's see. Any suggestions for sustainable ice blocks? Oh Lord, a thousand students and we sell about 500 a day. Okay, <laughs> so in a perfect world, you would make homemade icy poles in the trays um, for those students um, uh, with the sticks. Gelato is another great one. Um, again, that would be 500 scoops a day. Um, you can scoop them, pre-scoop them, freeze them, have them ready uh, when you have volunteers in there. That's a great option. Um, I'm just trying to think. The other thing is, if you can't get away from that, making sure what you have is recyclable. So, you know, if you've got an icy pole, like a, a lemonade icy pole that has the cover on it with the stick, that can be recycled in the soft plastics. And the stick can be in compost or it can be in paper cardboard. Um, smoothies, which I'm on the fence about because they can be recycled in the yellow recycling, but they do, when you cut them, have that little end that we put in the yellow bin anyway. Um, that's a tricky one, but it can be recycled. I know juices, can, which come like Calippo style and Calippos cannot be recycled. So a lot of ice creams that have that wax lining cannot be recycled. So obviously anything homemade is the way to go. Um, however, if you wanna make sure that, the, if you can't get rid of things, just check with the manufacturer if they can be recycled. I mean, that's really all I can suggest. The other thing is scooping you know, the ice cream onto cones, but obviously, you know, you're going to need to have volunteers for that. So everything has to kind of fit your school's needs. Um, I hope that helped. It is a tricky one with icy poles. Um, you know, that's a lot of students, 1,100. So I think my best suggestion is if you can't do the homemade ice blocks, you can do them small, you can do them big, you can invest in the stainless steel make icy pole makers, but you're obviously going to have to have a freezer to put them in. Um, you know, is to make sure what you're serving can be recycled. So hope that helped. It is a bit of a tricky one. Um, okay, good question. How many extra hours would the canteen manager need per day to implement these changes? So I have to be honest and say it's going to be different for everybody because it depends on what you're implementing, how many hours you're already given. Most canteen managers, I think, are five to six hours. So um, how fast you work, how many volunteers you get, what exactly you're doing. Do you have a commercial dishwasher? So it's going to vary. I'm definitely gonna say you're gonna need your full six hours and tell, do you have a sustainability team that's helping you bring in stuff? Are you using bins? Are they bringing them to the counter? So if this is something you're seriously thinking about, it's probably an email question to me. I need to know how many students you have. I need to know what you're thinking of doing, um, how many lunches you do a day, uh, how many specials you have, 
So there's a lot of vari variable questions for how many hours this is going to take. Um, you know, something that might take me five hours, it might take someone that I work with six and a half. Um, maybe I have volunteers that day, maybe I don't, but 100%, it will take you six hours. And probably a little bit more until you get everything dialed down. But there's lots of variables that go into that for me to be able to help answer that specifically for you. Um, yeah, so if you're not, if you're just implementing getting rid of single use plastic, um, like the basic stuff, it's not gonna make a difference. Um, but once you start using reusables, it's gonna make a difference, but that's why you need the support from everybody else. Um, and probably extra help until that happens from your PNC convener, from your subcommittee, from volunteers, letting them know that you're implementing this program. Um, yeah, so email me separately if you're serious about it and that goes for everybody because it's on a case-to-case -case basis in order for me to answer that kind of 100%. Kathy, thank you, that did answer. I'm just concerned about dropping off at the supermarket, yeah. Recycle bin is full. True. Good. Yeah. Good point, Kathy. I I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. If it is full, then you might have to come back. Um, but email me and give me a chance to kind of research it a bit better. But I do feel like I'm going to come up with that answer. But if you want to go with the compostable bag, the more eco-friendly bag, I'll get you the link for that. And um, I know that's been asked before on Sustainable New South Wales Facebook page. Um, so let me look into that, but just email me to remind me. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I know. I mean, I've been driving around for weeks sometime with soft plastics in my car waiting for that bin to go down. So it is a tricky one, so. Um, let's see, hope everyone's still hanging in there. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions on how to encourage parents who pack their children's lunch to take a similar approach to the canteen? <laughs> Excuse me. Even if the canteen do what they can, parents still, correct. So biggest nightmare in the world, I totally agree. Parents pack so much waste. And again, that's why I go back to why I feel it's very important for kids to take home their own rubbish and show their parents exactly how much rubbish they're accumulating. Because when the, canteen, when the school provides a bin system, parents don't get to see all the waste that we're accumulating on the school property um, because we're taking care of it. So that is a huge reason why I really uh, want schools to focus on a no bin system or start with a bin, bin system and then kind of peter out of that and slowly break away from that, especially soft plastics. Um, but um, what was I going to say about that? Um, the only thing I can, I, I've done in the past to, is to, I've taken photos of all the Ziploc bags in my landfill because the kids will hide their full sandwiches, which are commonly in a Ziploc bag or cling film, and hide it in landfill, right? Because they don't want anyone to know that they're throwing it away. And they don't take it home because they don't want to get in trouble. So common sense stuff. So I have taken it all out and taken photos, posted it in our newsletter, posted it in the school's our canteen Facebook page to show parents what's happening with their beautiful sandwiches in a non-recyclable item. Um, you know, and um, how they're being wasted. So I do that a lot. I do do informational um, newsletter content, talking about food waste, talking about soft plastic photos of the soft plastics on a Friday, which are, can be, be in a massive pile. It's just sharing that information, letting parents know, getting the schools to do waste-free Wednesdays, which I know a lot of schools do, some have stopped maybe doing more of those. Um, but I guess, you know, it's just education. And unfortunately, you know, parents, uh, it is an easy thing and we're all guilty of it, grabbing, you know, the cookies in a thing that come in 10 different bags as opposed to buying them in bulk and putting them in, you know, a reusable thing or a bento box with little um, containers. So I guess it's just education and um, trying to show them all the waste with images. So parents never see what we see. Um, so maybe it's laying out all the yogurt pouches that are predominantly uneaten, um, all the sandwiches, all the waste, doing the waste audit as I suggested and showing all the rubbish that they are bringing to the school and give them tips on how to eliminate that. So you can find tips like that all over the internet. I've done a lot of articles like that just popping in the school newsletter. So that's all I can kind of suggest, and it's a tough one. <clears throat> Thanks for that question. 
<coughs> excuse me for a sec. <coughs> hmm. Um, okay, Kathy, about milkshakes in schools. So I think I kind of touched on that earlier, but keep cups, perfect. Um, that's the only really, they come, you can get keep cups, I think in 250 mil, 350 mil, 550 mil, and they're perfect for milkshakes. So they've got a closed lid on them. <laughs> Not all of them have an open spout. Some of them have that closed lid. If it becomes a problem where they're spilling, it might be something where milkshakes need to be picked up at the canteen window. If not, you know, it's just trial and error to see what cups work. As I mentioned before, um, there are leak proof cups. You just kind of have to search for them. I can give you clues on them if you want to uh, email me. Um, but yeah, that, that's an easy fix, milkshakes. Um, depends on how many you do, but it just has to be a leak proof reusable cup. But the cheapest way are the $2 keep cups from um, Target, Kmart, things like that, you know? So that's... Um, okay. Keen to know what other schools use for making their own icy pulls that is healthy and cost-effective. Okay. So I can only speak of other schools that I know. So I know a lot of schools use um, your generic 100% juice with no added sugar and they water it down. So it becomes very diluted, um, half and half. A lot of them put um, fresh berries in them. Um, a lot of, some other schools will use organic or non-organic um, coconut milk, um, you know, with berries in it, with coconut in it. I mean, really, honestly, you can think of anything. Or some schools that have a bigger canteen budget will use organic juice, will do green juices, will use some schools even squeeze their own juices. So it's wherever you stand with your budget and how much you can spend in your purchasing, you can go from as low scale to a $2 bottle of 100% natural juice, no artificial colors, flavors, no added sugar, and dilute half of that. It literally makes an icy pull about eight cents each. And then you can pack it with blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, whatever you want, frozen berries to cut costs, fresh berries. So. With icy poles, um, you can pretty much do whatever you want. I know some people do um, coconut uh, milk with cacao to make it chocolate, fresh strawberries with um, milk, blended in a blender. Then you've got strawberry, natural flavored strawberry icy poles. You know, I know some schools use flavored milk. Unfortunately, not my favorite go-to thing, but, um, and they pour that into their icy pole holders. So yeah, I think there's quite a few options there, but really it, you can just do anything and it is extremely cost effective. Um, that is a fantastic money maker. If you sell the small ones, you can sell them for 50 cents to a dollar, you know, get the larger, more, um, the bigger icy poles, sell them for two, three dollars. Um, and your cost to make that would probably be anywhere from 20 cents to 80 cents, depending on what you're putting in it. Okay, I'll just go down. There's a few more. Um, okay. Sorry. Okay. Have you tried reusable stainless steel lunch boxes with names with kids buy and bring into the canteen and take home for cleaning each day? No, I have not. Good idea? Most definitely. Do I think they'll remember to bring them back? Probably not. So a few hiccups with that one, but if you um, implement that, I love it, but I'm, I'm not sure what you're putting in them. If it's just a sandwich, it doesn't have sections or cause hot food is tricky with stainless steel. Stainless steel cannot go into a dishwasher either. It gets scratched up terribly. So they will need to be hand washed. Um, I was using stainless steel for the sushi baby bentos for a while as a trial. Uh, which were great, which works great because they're cold. So anything cold that's going to go into them is fantastic. I'm not quite sure about putting hot stuff in them. Um, if the kids, if you have a program that you can implement, like at the beginning of the year, um, and every student is responsible to bring one, I'm not sure, you know, with their name on it, you will probably get a child that orders lunch that doesn't have one. So you might have to have spare, which isn't that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, the cleaning is a bit of a if they take it home to clean, I guess that's fine. Um, these are all great ideas. I'm just not sure what you're serving in them and um, if it's gonna suit all your needs, 
but it might. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to see exactly what you're gonna use that for. Um, you know, I like the idea of them purchasing it. Uh, another way to offset your cost of buying reusable bags and reusable containers is to implement um, you know, a sustainability levy, a cost on um, Flexi Schools. We have one on Flexi Schools that when you go on, you, before you order your first lunch, um, you know, you pay for that bag to use it all year. Um, so there's a certain fee. You could do the same for a container or you can just make it all one price to use everything that you're implementing every year. Now let's be clear that once they pay that year, they'll pay next year and you're still using the same product. So now you're making money, hopefully, on what you've invested. So it's a fantastic way to recoup your cost of all the reusable items that you've purchased. So that's a very easy way. Um, there's also a sustainability levy that you can put into your PNC um, that can offset costs of the reusable program as well. Obviously that has to be approved by the school and the PNC, but I know some schools are doing that now and talking about doing that. I know some parents would be happy to pay for that as opposed to pay for you know, something else, a PNC magazine that they might pay $15 for. They might be happy to donate $25 or as part of their school fees to offset the costs to run this program. Um, yeah, so I just digressed a bit, but on the stainless steel, um, yeah, I'm just not sure if you would fit everything in it. Like if Tom ordered a sandwich with a fruit salad uh, with a banana bread, if it's all going to fit in that container, if it's all going to get mushed together, how are you going to separate it? Or is he going to have two containers? And stainless steel can be kind of expensive. So, um, price wise, it can be a bit tricky. So if you want to talk to me more about that, definitely email me privately um, and let me know more in depth what you want to use it for. Um, let me just see if I've missed some here. So I hope that answered that question. Um, I'm a student. My school is not entirely on board with all the sustainable option. I have talked with teachers and leadership councils, but haven't been able to progress due to financial problems, I'm assuming. How do I encourage my school to implement even basic sustainable options? This is anonymous. You know, I, it, it's hard. I, I can give all the suggestions I've already given. Um, the only way for schools to get on board is for, to go, for you to go to PNC meetings, for you to show statistics. To, for you to show solutions, um, I guess, and numbers. So, you know, that means you doing a little bit of research and saying how much this might cost, how you might be able to help with, um, you know, with those costs or some ideas for fundraising. But um, really it's just keeping up um, emails to the school, suggestions. Yeah, it's a real hard one. Um, when you're a student, but it's really, you just need to get the school on board. And I guess it's just keep knocking on doors, sending emails, suggestions, um, and helping them with ideas to implement it. It's a, I'm really, I feel bad, like I can't answer that one fully, but it's just really just to keep persisting and persisting and persisting and, show, and, and giving them solutions because they probably don't know how to fix the problem. But if you can give them a solution to the problem and the benefits of doing it, whether that's financial or environmental, then I think, you know, eventually they're going to have to hopefully come to the party. That's all I can say. Sorry. Hope that helps. Um, okay. Sorry, let's see if it's going up. Um, do you have the brand of the Lovely Clear? <laughs> okay. So do you know the brand of the Lovely Clear Landfill Bin? It's not one I've seen and looks nifty. Okay. Yes, I do know the brand. It is from Queensland, from a company called Rudd. Uh, a lot of schools, um, those were from Wheeler Heights. And when about two years ago, we had about 33 schools come to do a tour of Wheeler Heights and the program, because at the time we were the first one to implement um, anything like that. Those bins, I, we purchased for a lot of different reasons. One being that the birds can't get in it. They're very sturdy. They were color coordinated. They were um, guaranteed warranty. Um, etc. And most importantly, they have that see-through bin, which is what it's called. And when I was doing a lot of work with the Environmental Coastal Center in, and their waste team, um, it was suggested that we show the kids just how much waste they were generating on a daily basis. Now, as you can see in that photo, there's not a lot, which is absolutely fantastic. But at the time, it was horrendous. 
So their, their name is Rudd, R-U-D, Queensland, and that is a see-through bin. And a lot of schools I know in the Northern Beaches have that exact same bin system set up. So hope that helps. Um, let's see. Do you have, okay, Sarah's asking, do you have suggestions for things like fruit salads or yogurt and muesli that go into lunch bags? I need, yeah. Okay, so reusable containers. Now I'll go from like the really low end, which is the one sitting in the lost and found right now that we've cleaned. We put fruit salads in those. We, um, at certain schools, um, fruit salads, yogurts, all that stuff, anything that's gonna need to lid easily can go into those small containers that are left behind months after we've tried to find the owner and we write return to the canteen or a sticker goes on it return to the canteen uh the property of the canteen property of wheeler heights or bill goal wherever it might be um however there's also small containers um like that that would be perfect um these are the ones made out of the rice husk if you're interested let me know um on the food nasty is the only one that has these um you can go to stores, obviously, and get plastic con poly containers. I would urge you not to, only because of, you know, they'll be here for 500 years. Um, however, you know, any container with a lid's gonna do. Reusing what you have already there in the canteen, or in Lost and Found, or implementing these um, eco-friendly rice husk ones, which come in different sizes, or whatever fits your budget. So again, if you want to contact me privately, um, if, it, if you have to go a certain direction for a certain reason, then I can discuss with, with you, but there's definitely an option out there for you to use 100%. Um, because actually what just let me think while I'm talking, a lot of the containers, if you wanted to use cardboard, they will soak, especially with yogurt, they're not going to be any good. And then a lot of them that are food grade, um, we'll have that wax lining that a lot of people buy and they think that it's because um, it's cardboard that it's recyclable. And even if you put, say, popcorn in it, because of that wax lining, it's not recyclable. So be very careful when you're looking at paper, cardboard, compostable, biodegradable, that you research your product because most likely it's not going to break down the way you think it is. So, yeah, anyway, let me know. Um, Sarah Smith, email me and we can talk about um, what you want, what you want to get for those items. Um, okay, Sarah, our canteen serves rolls with fillings, tuna, egg, mayo. We currently wrap and cling wrap Ooh. to put in the tub suggestions for alternatives. Okay, fantastic suggestions, beeswax wraps, 100%. Okay, There's, they last forever. If you treat them correctly, you can re-dip them every six months or whenever you need to, um, yeah, that, that's a fantastic solution. Or if you need to put them in a reusable container, if you've got containers, you can put them into a reusable bento box, but cheapest, easiest way, call your local boomerang bags, see if they've got any extra fabric lying, lying around. You can get beeswax all over the place now, call the Environmental Coastal Center, Google it, they'll help you. Council might even have ideas. Get some moms, dads, grandparents around, dip your cloths, do your beeswax. It's actually quite fun, and that is the perfect solution to cling film. You do not need cling film anymore. It's a terrible nuisance. It cannot be broken down. Um, yes, yeah, so if you cannot, for some reason, do the beeswax wraps, um, it, it, you, I put them in a paper bag. So you can get paper bags that are that um, length, like a wrap length, like you know, sausage in a bun length, uh, you or squares. You can get a hundred different sizes of paper bags, and I would be putting in that. But my first suggestion would obviously be to um, make the beeswax wrap. Super simple, very cost effective. Sanitize it properly. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to have to get it back. So you're going to have to implement how you're going to get that back, and it's going to be you know a little bit tricky in the beginning. But if you're going to get rid of cling film, um, you can use beeswax wraps to wrap everything. Your banana bread, if you make scrolls, your garlic breads, your um, cookies, your muffins, um, literally everything. So thanks, Sarah. Great question. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. From your experience, um, this is from Vanda again. From your experience, 
with the schools using reusable systems, does it all come back or is it scattered around the playground? Great question. And no, it does not all come back in the beginning. And it is definitely trial and error. And um, every school is different. Every school, uh, the, the children are different at every school. Principals are different. Teachers are different in a sense. What I mean by that is how they help facilitate the program. Um, I have to say at Gilgola Plateau, <clears throat> they did very well. They have had, I'm sure, some loss, but it's very minimal compared to say, example, Wheeler Heights in the beginning. Um, kids were throwing stuff in the bin to hide that they didn't eat it. They were using those forks for digging in the ground. They were using cups to dig in the ground. So when it's very important to have the principal on board to support the program, to let the children know if they do not put things in the correct bin, if you have bins, if they do not return them to the canteen properly, A, they will, something will happen. They may have to pick up trash um, during recess and lunch. Uh, they may be, you, they may be rewarded for doing the right thing or they may be reprimanded for doing the wrong thing. That's however the school wants to take it. But yes, I would, I would be lying if I said, don't expect to lose a percentage of your stuff in the beginning because it's your learning, their learning, but education is key, giving them time to understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, where it should go. And that if they don't do it correctly, there'll be consequences. Or if they do it, do it correctly, they'll be rewarded, whether that's a canteen voucher or an icy pole in the beginning until they learn or however your school wants to run it. Um, but again, I strongly feel the less things you have on the property, the less opportunity they have to throw anything away in the wrong bin. I think all reusable should come straight to the canteen. We get it faster, you can wash it quicker, you can clean it better, uh, the quicker you get it to the canteen as opposed to waiting for the bins to come in. Um, it just becomes second nature for kids. They should be taking their label out, they should be shaking their bags, they should be scraping their food plates. They should be doing all these things anyways, hopefully at home, but ideally they should be doing all of that. It'll make your job easier. Um, and it's just how it should work. It's similar to, I, I guess I could say to like the UK, to America, to other schools um, in Asia where they have cafeteria style. So it's, that's all it is when they bring everything back, they take it all out, you guys wash it, put it back in, um, but you will see some loss. Um, but yes, the less things the better, none is great. If that's not a possibility, teachers need to be enforce it. If they see somebody dropping a container on the ground, a cup on the ground, digging in the ground with a fork, they need to back the canteen, the program, the, the investment that you've all put into this, the stuff and get the kids in the kids need to either be reprimanded and again, or rewarded for bringing everything back in the beginning. So yeah, you will see some loss, but hopefully, you know, it's practice, 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 practice. Okay. And one more. We currently serve roughly 100 postables per day. They are taken, take away plastic containers that can be frozen and sit in the pie warmer. We also use similar containers for wedges, soup, fried rice, etc. We are struggling to find alternatives. Again, that's a lot. Um, you would have to invest into the con a container that can do what you want, which is, I did mention the rice husk. It can be polypropylene, like high density, plastic that doesn't leak anything. I don't want to go down that route, but I understand not everybody can buy everything in the beginning. Um, wedges, I don't know why those can't be served in maybe um, a paper bag. Um, they don't need to really be in a container. Um, fried rice, um, you might be able to look for something for fried rice. It can probably go into a cardboard box that's not lined, that's food grade. It's not going to leach that much if you're not able to do everything reusable. Um, possibles, unfortunately, I think that you would have to um, invest in reusable containers. And if that takes, say, roughly 200 containers a day, um, that's what you'd have. And you'd have them that go into the freezer, that the ones that go into the pie warmer, um, but the kids would have to return them into a reusable system that you'd have. Um, yeah, the possible one, there's nothing that 
is there's compostable ones, but again, unless you've got a compost, a commercial composter or someone that's going to pick them up, you could implement, like I said earlier, a company like uh, Pack360, there's, and there's several other ones that will give you all the containers, but this is going to be at a cost, an ongoing cost. You're going to have to pay for bins, pay for pickup. So going with the reusables is going to be a way better way to go. Um, but the wedges, I think you can get bags if you can't. Um, obviously, they might have a little bit of grease in them, but you know, this is when it becomes tricky when you design a menu. You have to also design a menu that's gonna fit your sustainability needs. So you might have to cut things out, A, that are not as nutritious as, you know, not that nutritious, they should probably go first. And secondly, do you need all that food? Can you make all that food um, with this new program? So a menu rehaul is almost 99% needed every time a sustainability program is put into place at schools. So again, I'd love to talk to you more about it. I can, you know, I can kind of look at your menu, give you some better ideas. Um, if anyone wants to email me after, please do so. If you want to know more about the containers and what they're made of and how much they cost and or anything else that I might be able to do to help you, um, please let me know. And I hope you've enjoyed the webinar. Really appreciate the council. They're going to send you a survey straight now, right after I'm done. Um, the Swap for Good team will send you a survey. Please fill it out. We'd love to hear what you have to say. If there's something I missed, I'm sure there is, please let me know. But please um, email me because every school is really specific. So I probably just need to know a little bit more about you if I didn't hit, if I didn't answer it correctly. Thanks so much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody.